When using connections from connection pools, which most likely you are, there are a couple of best practices to keep in mind. The first is, during the time when you have a connection, keep your code focused on data access and only hold on to the connection as long as you need to. What you don't want to do is to get a connection and then perform some other time-consuming operations, like a bunch of business logic, calling a web service, or writing a file or anything like that. You want to stay focused on the data access that needs to be performed. You may very well need to perform some complex logic on the data that you're reading, or perhaps call a web service to perform an operation on the data you just queried. But all of this can come after you've performed your data access and return the connection to the pool. You want to treat database connections as a somewhat scarce resource and a resource that is expensive to create. As we saw in the prior demonstration, it took about a second to open up a new physical connection to the database, and that is actually a pretty typical value. If you have pieces of data access code that hold on to database connections longer than they need to, it stands to reason that more of the connections in the pool will be checked out at any one time. And as we have discussed, if all the connections are in use and another request comes in for a connection, then the pool will have to respond by opening another physical connection to the database. From an application's point of view, Whatever business operation is calling the data access code is now incurring the cost in terms of time for needing to open this new connection. In addition, because you now have more open physical connections, you're also going to be using more PGA memory on your Oracle server because each connection to Oracle uses up some memory on the database server. Finally, if your application is busy enough that you are at the maximum pool size, you could see segments of your data access code block while they wait for a connection to become available. This means your user is experiencing a delay in performing whatever operation they were trying to perform because a connection isn't available. But the root cause is that you have some other piece of code that is holding on to a connection longer than it needs to, that it doesn't need anymore. Maybe this other thread is waiting on a slow web service to return or doing some other operation. So what you have effectively done is to introduce a bottleneck into your application and the effects of this bottleneck will be felt in multiple functions across the application. So be a good steward of your connections and make sure that while you have a connection, the code is short and focused on data access, and this will make sure that your application is making the most efficient use of the connection pool as possible. There are occasions that we run a query in our application code, and in response to the results in that query, we may need to execute additional SQL statements against Oracle. One example of such a situation is shown here in the slide. I have a method where I want to get a list of courses for a term, and in addition, I need to look up some information about the department that is offering the course. This code itself is not a very good example of how you would write this code. For example, most departments will offer many courses, but in this code, we'd be querying that same department over and over again. But for our purposes, this code is just here to illustrate a point. We're in one data access routine, we have a connection open to the database, and we need to execute additional statements. And so in this case, we might call a method like this, and this would look up the department info, map it to a department object, and return the data to our first method. The problem with this code, the way that it is shown, is that it is actually going to use two connections to Oracle in order to do this. The connection in the top method and in the bottom method are separate and distinct connections. So from a connection pooling perspective, now we have one logical operation in our application that is using two different connections from the connection pool in order to complete. So if we had a lot of code like this, our connection pool would seem to be much busier than it really should be, because each time this is happening, we're using two connections rather than just one. And by now, you can guess the problems that are associated with this we are probably going to have to open additional physical connections to Oracle, and as we know, this will take longer for whichever threads end up having to open those connections. And we are much more likely that we are going to be close to our maximum pool size, because we have effectively doubled the number of connections it takes to get this segment of work done. So if we have a really busy application, we may encounter some situations where the pool is at maximum pool size, and some of our threads end up blocking, waiting for a connection to become available in the pool. The Oracle drivers, both for Java and .NET, contain support for something called Multiple Active Result Sets, or MARS. This is available by default. There's nothing that you have to do to turn this on. 
And what this allows us to do is to pass the connection object down to the child method as shown here, and you can call multiple SQL statements on the same connection. This is the encouraged way to do things. Now, this code is only using one connection, so we are more efficient from a connection and connection pool perspective. Second, if this code was in a transaction, both queries are running on the same connection now, so they will run in the same transaction and the results you get back will be logically consistent, whereas before, they wouldn't have necessarily been so. Now you might look at this code and think that you might still need a query department method that only takes department ID as a parameter so you can call this from your business logic layer. And if that's the case, you can easily accomplish that with a little bit of method overloading. Just know that anytime you have a data access method call another data access method, what you should do is have the first data access method get the connection and hand this same connection down to the child methods to use. This will make sure that the entire logical operation is only using one connection to Oracle, which is the most efficient in terms of performance and not opening unnecessary connections, and is also the right answer from a transactional processing point of view.